paranormal evidence that will shock you, very scary, in the dimly lit room, the walls, faded with age, echoed with the low murmur of two voices. As the clock struck midnight, Emma, a seasoned paranormal investigator, sat across from her rookie partner, James, their digital recorder set firmly between them. This place, Emma began, her voice a whisper, has secrets buried deeper than its foundations. Her eyes, scanning the shadows, were pools of seriousness. James, his hands trembling slightly, gripped his notebook. What, what kind of secrets, he stuttered, his voice barely above a whisper. Shoot, Emma cautioned, raising a finger to her lips, her eyes narrowing. Listen, learn, and, most importantly, believe, she whispered sternly. The air, thick with anticipation, carried a chill that seemed unnatural, even for a derelict house situated on the edge of an abandoned Victorian village. As the silence stretched, a sudden, sharp static burst from the recorder, punctuating the quiet. Emma's hand, quick and sure, paused the playback. Did you hear that? she asked, her gaze locked on the static-filled device. I... I don't know, James admitted, his voice hesitant. He leaned in, squinting at the digital numbers that flickered on the small screen. It sounded like, like a voice. Yes, Emma confirmed, her nod slow, deliberate. She rewound the tape, playing it again. This time, both strained their ears, listening as the static cleared momentarily, revealing a faint, almost imperceptible whisper, leave, now. James felt a shiver race down his spine, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and fascination. Whose voice was that? he asked, his voice a mix of excitement and dread. No one knows, Emma replied, her voice low. This house, it belonged to the Harrows, a family that vanished, all seven of them, without a trace, on a night much like this one. Her hands, steady as she operated the recorder, contrasted with the growing unease that filled the room. As the night deepened, their investigation continued, moving from the dusty parlor into the long, narrow hallway that groaned with every step. The air grew colder, denser, as if resisting their presence. Every shadow seemed to twitch, every whisper of wind a sigh from the past. Their next stop was the library, a room filled with rotting books and broken furniture. Here, the atmosphere was thick with the smell of mildew and decay. As Emma set up another recorder, James wandered, his flashlight beam dancing over the spines of books, most of them too decayed to read. Suddenly, his light caught on something unusual, a small, leather-bound book, its cover less worn than the others. Emma, look at this, he called out, his voice echoing slightly in the cramped space. What is it? Emma asked, joining him. She took the book, examining it carefully. This, this could be a diary, she realized, her voice tinged with excitement. As she opened it, the pages creaked, the writing old, faded but still legible in places. March 5, 1912, Emma read aloud, her voice echoing slightly in the still room. Something has come to our home. At night, we hear it scratching inside the walls, whispering our names. My husband says it's just rats, but I... I see the shadows move. I fear it is something far worse. As Emma continued to read, James felt the temperature in the room drop further, the shadows seeming to lean closer, as if eager to listen. The wind, picking up outside, rattled the ancient windows, adding a haunting melody to Emma's reading. April 2, 1912, she read, her voice steady despite the eerie atmosphere. It's getting closer. Last night, it stood at the foot of my bed, watching, waiting. I could not see its face, but I felt its presence, heavy, suffocating. Emma's voice faltered, just a moment, her eyes darting up to catch James's gaze. His expression, wrought with a blend of horror and intrigue, urged her on. 
I dared not move, she read, her voice lowering, for fear it might touch me. Its breath, cold, foul, stank of the grave, the room around them seemed to press closer, the walls themselves whispering secrets long buried. James, swallowing hard, shifted uncomfortably, the beam of his flashlight trembling in his grasp. Do, do you think it's still here? He asked, his voice barely audible over the rising wind. Shoo, Emma hushed, her finger pressed to her lips once more. Her eyes, scanning the darkness, were alert, aware. We must be quiet, very quiet, she instructed, her voice a mere whisper. It might still be listening. The silence that followed was oppressive, heavy with the unspoken fear that clung to the shadows. Emma, her hand trembling slightly, turned the page, continuing her reading. April 3rd, 1912, she whispered, my husband, he doesn't believe me. He says it's stress, the loneliness of this old house. But last night, he heard it too, the whispering. He's afraid, though he won't admit it. James, his back against the cold, damp wall, listened intently, his mind racing. The details in the diary were more than mere ghost tales, they were a testimony to a terror that had lived, breathed in this very room. As Emma narrated, each word seemed to echo around them, as if the house itself was recounting its dark past. Just as she was about to turn another page, a sudden, loud crash from the hallway startled them both. The flashlight, slipping from James's grip, clattered to the floor, its light flickering erratically. What was that? James gasped, his heart pounding against his ribs like a drum. Emma, ever the calm in the storm, placed the diary down gently. Stay here, she commanded, her voice firm, as she picked up another flashlight. I'll check it out. You, keep reading. It might be important. With cautious steps, Emma ventured out into the hallway, her light casting long, ominous shadows against the walls. The air was colder here, the silence punctuated by the distant howling of the wind. Each step seemed to echo, a reminder of the isolation of their location. Back in the library, James, his hands shaking, picked up the diary. His eyes, scanning the page, caught on a passage that made his blood run cold. April 10th, 1912, he read, his voice a whisper, it's angry. We tried to leave, but it wouldn't let us. The doors, windows, all sealed as if by some unseen hand. We are trapped here, with it, outside the room, Emma crept along the hallway, her flashlight beam revealing nothing but old portraits and moth-eaten curtains. As she neared the source of the noise, her breath caught in her throat. The door to the basement, previously shut tight, was now ajar, creaking softly as if inviting her in. She paused, her instinct screaming for her to turn back, but curiosity, that powerful force, urged her forward. With a deep breath, she pushed the door open, the hinges groaning in protest. The air that rushed out was colder, mustier, filled with the scent of damp earth and something faintly metallic. The beam of her flashlight pierced the darkness below, the stairs descending into an abyss that seemed to pulsate with a life of its own. Emma's heart raced, her hand gripping the flashlight so tightly her knuckles turned white. As she took her first step down, a voice, soft, malevolent, whispered from the shadows, Welcome home. Back in the library, James continued to read, unaware of Emma's encounter. April 15, 1912, he murmured, the words tumbling from his lips, it speaks to me now, in dreams, in waking moments. It knows my fears, feeds on them. It promises an end, a release, but at what cost? The wind outside grew fiercer, the house creaking under its force. James, feeling a sudden chill, looked up, his breath visible in the air. The room felt different now, as if the very atmosphere had shifted, become denser, charged with an unseen energy. The shadows seemed to creep closer, 
the edges of his vision blurring. And in that moment, in the heart of that dark, forsaken house, both Emma and James found themselves teetering on the brink of a truth too terrifying to comprehend, drawn inexorably into the depths of a story that refused to end, a story that clung to the walls of the old Harrow house like a malevolent specter, whispering of horrors yet to come. Emma, her breath shallow, descended the creaking, wooden stairs cautiously, each step echoing ominously in the stale, cold air of the basement. The flashlight's beam flickered as if struggling against the darkness, which seemed to swallow the light whole. As she reached the bottom, her feet touched the cold, damp concrete, sending a shiver up her spine. The air was thick, heavy with the scent of mold and something else, something sinister, that lingered just out of sight. Above her, the door creaked slowly, as if moving on its own. Emma spun around, her heart leaping into her throat, only to see the empty doorway, the light from the hall above casting a long, dark shadow into the basement. Just the wind, she muttered to herself, though her voice betrayed a hint of doubt. She turned back to the room, her flashlight scanning the darkness. The basement was cluttered with old furniture, boxes, and forgotten memories, covered in layers of dust and cobwebs. As her light swept over a particularly shadowy corner, she paused, squinting. There, amidst the shadows, something moved, a quick, fleeting motion, like a whisper of fabric or a flicker of something unseen. Who's there? Emma called out, her voice echoing back at her, mocking her fear. Silence answered, thick and suffocating. She took a step forward, her flashlight beam trembling as she aimed it toward the corner. Nothing. Just an old, moth-eaten curtain that hung limply from a rusted rod. Back in the library, James was oblivious to Emma's frightful encounter as he continued to read from the diary, his voice growing hoarser with each entry. April 17, 1912, he read, It grows bolder, its whispers louder. Last night, I saw it, truly saw it, in the moonlight. It was horrifying, a specter of malice and sorrow, its eyes hollow, its form ethereal. My husband thinks I am mad, but I am not. It is real, as real as the fear that grips my heart outside, the storm intensified, the wind howling like a banshee around the corners of the old house. The windows rattled in their frames, and somewhere, in a distant room, something fell with a crash, sending a spike of fear through James's heart. He jumped, his eyes darting around the dimly lit room, half expecting to see the specter from the diary manifest before him. Meanwhile, Emma, determined to uncover the source of her unease, moved deeper into the basement. The air grew colder, the darkness denser. Her flashlight flickered again, briefly plunging her into darkness before sputtering back to life. Her heart raced, her mind screaming for her to flee, but her legs carried her forward, driven by an unyielding need to know, to understand what had terrorized the Harrow family so many years ago. She reached the far end of the basement, where an old, wooden chest sat against the wall, its surface thick with dust. Cautiously, she approached it, her hands trembling as she reached out to lift the lid. The hinges groaned, a sound that seemed to echo through the void, as if awakening something long dormant. Inside, she found old photographs, yellowed with age, and letters written in a hurried scrawl. But it was what lay beneath that caught her eye, a small, leather-bound book, much like the diary upstairs, but older, its cover cracked and worn. As Emma opened the book, the pages creaked, the ink faded but still legible. She began to read, her voice a whisper lost in the vastness of the basement. They do not believe, but I have seen it, felt its touch, its breath upon my neck. I fear it will never leave, that it is bound to this house, to my family. We are cursed, forever to walk these halls, forever to hear its cries. Upstairs, James shivered, a cold breeze whispering across his neck as if breath from unseen lips. He turned, looking over his shoulder, half expecting to see someone, something, standing there. But there was nothing, 
just the oppressive, unnerving silence of the Harrow House. And so, as Emma delved deeper into the secrets of the house, and James felt the weight of the haunting words of the diary pressing upon him, both were drawn ever closer to a truth that threatened to unravel their minds, a truth shrouded in shadows and whispers. In the heart of the old house, where time seemed to stand still, the past and present merged into a single, terrifying reality, and the line between the living and the dead blurred, leaving them both teetering on the brink of the abyss. As Emma thumbed through the ancient, brittle pages of the book, her eyes caught on a passage that made her breath catch in her throat. It has a name, that much I have discovered, she read, her voice barely audible in the chilling silence of the basement. It calls itself Mordred, not of this earth, not of the living. Bound here by dark rituals, by blood, it seeks to consume, to possess, to control. The air around her felt charged, as if the very act of speaking its name had invoked an unseen presence. Meanwhile, upstairs, James's grip on the diary tightened. The wind outside had reached a fever pitch, its howls now mingled with the faint, yet unmistakable, sound of footsteps above him. His heart raced, pounding against his chest as if trying to escape. This can't be, he whispered to himself, forcing his eyes back to the diary. May 1st, 1912, he read, his voice shaking, tonight is the night we attempt to end our torment. We have found a way, risky though it may be, to sever the ties that bind it here. Should we fail, I fear for anyone who steps foot in this cursed place. The flashlight beside him flickered, then died, plunging him into darkness. His breath became visible, puffing out in frantic, white clouds. Frantically, he fumbled for his backup light, his fingers numb with cold and fear. When the beam finally flicked on, it revealed that the room had changed. The walls seemed closer, the shadows deeper, and from the darkness, a low, menacing growl echoed, chilling his blood. Below, Emma, hearing the distant sound of distress, hastily tucked the old book into her bag. Her flashlight, now her only source of comfort, guided her back towards the staircase. Each step creaked ominously under her weight, the sound unnaturally loud in the enveloping silence. As she reached the top, the door to the basement slammed shut behind her, its bang reverberating through the house. Her heart skipped a beat, but she pressed on, determined to find James and leave this nightmare behind. Back in the library, James backed against a wall, the diary clutched to his chest. The growling intensified, a sound no human throat could produce, a sound filled with malice and hunger. The air around him grew icy, his breath a mist before his face, and then, from the shadows, emerged a figure. Tall, gaunt, its eyes hollow pits of despair, it moved towards him, its form flickering like an old film reel. Emma burst into the room just as the apparition reached James. James, she cried out, her voice breaking through the oppressive atmosphere. The figure paused, turning its hollow gaze upon her. Emma, undeterred, reached into her bag, pulling out the ancient book. I know what you are, Mordred, she shouted, her voice firm despite her fear. And I know how to banish you. The figure hissed, a sound like steam escaping a valve, and the temperature dropped further, a visible frost forming on the windows. Emma quickly opened the book, her hands trembling as she found the passage she needed. Here, she said, handing the book to James. Read it aloud, it's our only chance. James took the book, his eyes scanning the ancient text. By the power of those who walk the paths of light, I command you, Mordred, be gone from this place, he read, his voice growing stronger with each word. The figure writhed, its form dissolving at the edges, as if being erased from existence. As he continued, the house itself seemed to protest, the walls shaking, the floors buckling under unseen forces. Emma and James stood firm, their voices united as they read the final words of the incantation. Return to the shadows, be bound there forever, never to harm again. 
With a final, ear-piercing scream, the figure disintegrated, the shadows lifting, the oppressive presence that had permeated the house dissipating like mist under the morning sun. The house fell silent, the storm outside easing, leaving only the sound of their heavy breathing. Exhausted, but relieved, Emma and James collapsed onto the floor, the diary and the ancient book lying between them. They had faced the unknown, a terror that had lurked within these walls for over a century, and had emerged victorious. But as they caught their breath, the house creaking as it settled, they knew this was not yet the end. The darkness had been banished, but for how long? And at what cost? As they prepared to leave, the first light of dawn creeping through the windows, they understood that some doors, once opened, are not so easily closed. As the first light of dawn spilled into the old Harrow house, Emma and James, their bodies weary from the night's ordeal, slowly stood. The silence that now enveloped the house was eerie, a stark contrast to the cacophony of the previous night. They exchanged a glance, each seeing the mixture of relief and residual fear in the other's eyes. We did it, Emma said, her voice a whisper, as if afraid to disturb the newfound peace. We actually did it. James nodded, his gaze wandering around the now quiet library. Yes, we did. But at what cost, he pondered aloud. The house, despite the apparent calm, still held an air of mystery, the events of the night etching themselves into the very essence of the place. As they gathered their equipment, the weight of their experience hung between them, an unspoken agreement that their lives had been irreversibly altered. The diary and the ancient book, now lying closed on the dusty table, seemed almost innocuous, yet they knew better than to underestimate the power contained within their pages. Before leaving, Emma took one last look at the diary. We should take these with us, she suggested, her eyes serious. If nothing else, we need to ensure that no one else suffers the way the Harrows did. James agreed, carefully packing the books into his bag. With one final sweep of their flashlights, they made their way out of the library, through the echoing hallways, and towards the front door. The house, bathed now in the gentle light of dawn, seemed almost normal, but they knew better than to let their guard down. As they stepped outside, the cool morning air felt refreshing, a stark contrast to the oppressive atmosphere they had endured inside. The sun, rising above the horizon, cast long shadows on the ground, the house behind them now just a dark silhouette against the brightening sky. They reached their car, the gravel crunching under their feet as they loaded their equipment into the trunk. James paused, looking back at the house. Do you think it's really over? he asked, a hint of doubt in his voice. Emma followed his gaze, her expression thoughtful. For now, yes, she replied, her tone suggesting she knew the fight might not be entirely finished. But we've learned something crucial tonight. We've seen what lies in the shadows, and we've faced it head on. Nodding, James closed the trunk, the sound echoing slightly in the quiet morning. And we'll be ready, he added, if it ever comes back. With a final look at the Harrow house, they got into the car. As they drove away, the house receded into the distance, becoming just another part of the landscape. But the memory of what had transpired there would remain with them, a haunting reminder of the night they had faced the very essence of terror. As the distance between them and the house grew, the sun rose higher, casting light into the darkest corners of the world. Yet, some shadows lingered, untouched by the light, holding secrets that were both ancient and eternal. Emma and James knew that their battle might be won, but the war against the darkness was far from over. However, for now, they had emerged victorious, carrying with them not just the tools of their trade but a deeper understanding of the mysteries that lay hidden in the shadows. And so, the story of the Harrow House ended, not with a bang, but with a quiet, lingering whisper, a reminder that some things, once stirred, are never quite the same again. As they drove into the light of a new day, Emma and James carried with them not only the scars of their encounter but a resolve that, 
should the darkness ever rise again, they would be ready to face it, no matter where, no matter when.